Hi everyone, welcome back to another Tech Core Duo video. Today I want to take a look at Affinity Photo. Now this is pretty much a Photoshop alternative and one of the best ones out there. Well, at least in my opinion. I'll let you decide that for yourself. Number one, it is only like 50 bucks or 25 bucks, depending on a deal that you can get. It's a one-time payment. You don't have to do any subscription nonsense or anything like that. And at such a cheap price, I was very skeptical. Let's see what we can do with it. Enough talk. So right off the bat, I have a image open here. What I'm going to do is right click on it. And what you would normally say, make a layer from background within Photoshop here, they tell you to rasterize. Okay. So in order to make changes to this layer, you have to turn it, uh, into a raster. Um, so let's start off with the toolbar on the left hand side and see what we got. This hand tool is just to move the entire canvas around. All right. You've got your selection tool. So from here you can do scaling, that kind of stuff. All right. That looks good. Um, next up we have the eyedropper tool. So if you need to select a color, this is how you would do it. Crop tool, exact same thing that you would have in Photoshop. You've got your constraints here. You can do unconstrained pretty much exactly what you got in Photoshop. Here you have the brush selection tool. I'm going to do a command eater to deselect. Nothing too fancy. You've got your magic wand tool. So essentially if I want to pick a specific color here, I can, uh, I just did that. And the tolerance was at 20. So I'm going to lower that tolerance, bring down that tolerance to five, deselect one more time. There we go. Now let's say if I want to select this entire row of letters here, I'm going to hit add. Okay. So now we got the O. We got the N Sonic wall. You know what? Might as well make a copy of that logo too. Perfect. I'm going to do a command C to copy and a command V to paste. Go back to the selection tool and voila, we've got our Sonic wall logo here. Looks great. Let's do a command D to deselect. Looks good to me. All right. That looks good. So we've got our magic wand tool here. And of course you have your regular square selection tool. So if I, for instance, want to get rid of this hand here, I can get rid of the hand here by selecting it just like that. Let's hit delete. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. I got to select the right layer there. Hit delete. And just like that, it deletes it. Um, let's undo that for now. And command D to deselect uh, the Shortcut commands on the keyboard are very similar to Photoshop, right? We've got our fill tool here. We've got a gradient tool, paintbrush. So just a standard, you know, if you want a paintbrush kind of thing, I rarely use that. Let's do a command Z again to undo. Got an eraser, paint mixer brush. We've got a, so this is sort of like the dodge tool. So you can do a dodge just like you would do in Photoshop to make something lighter. Of course, and we have our clone stamp tool. So if I wanted to, let's say, make this a little bit bigger, let's try to get rid of that hand there. I don't want that hand holding that device. Let's see if we can select a layer here and fill that hand in. Looks like it's doing the job. We'll touch that up a little bit better later, but as you can tell, it's working pretty dang well. All right, here we have a blur tool. We have a sharpen tool and a smudge tool. So if you wanted to, you know, smudge something to kind of smooth it out, blur it, uh, sharpen it just like you would in Photoshop. These tools work pretty identical. All right. So uh, the rest of this stuff obviously is text. So you can fill in anything you want here. For example, if I do this here and I wanted to do blending options to maybe give this a drop shadow or change the color or make it a gradient. Normally you would right click on the layer and then you would have blending options. But instead of blending options here, what they want you to do is click on the layer on the actual uh, canvas, and then they have layer effects. All right. So essentially the same thing. So if I want to, for example, give it a color overlay or a gradient overlay, I can do it that way. You can change this gradient from black to let's say red and from red and then from white over here let's make it like a green or something make it Christmassy or we'll do pink match my wallpaper all right that looks good um, I'd also like to give it an outline same thing that you would do for Photoshop which is called a stroke 
Here they call it an outline. You give it the radius as much as you like. And essentially all the same tools. All right, so it looks good. One other thing I wanted to take a look at was the freehand selection tool. Now with the freehand selection tool, uh, you obviously have like the lasso tool, which is in Photoshop. Here they call it the freehand tool. You can also do the polygon and you can also do the magnet magnetic lasso. Essentially, it magnetizes to what you need. In my case here, I'm just going to use the polygon. I'm going to try to get rid of this hand once and for all. Just a small cut here. Boom, just like that. Make sure I'm on the right layer, which I am. And we'll delete. Perfect. Command D to deselect. That looks good. And now I'm going to select this entire box here. Also using the polygon tool. Just so I can make some quick edits to the surrounding areas. So it might take you some time just to get used to the different uh, you know, areas here. Uh, you know, there are some slight differences on what the tools are named and where the tools are located, but essentially it's the same thing. So like right now, if I wanted to select the inverse, is there inverse selection here? Yeah. Pick invert pixel selection. Boom. So now I just selected everything else there. And the reason I wanted to do that was so that I can easily use the clone stamp tool to fill in the rest of this uh, blank area here. Oops. There we go. Perfect, deselect, and you have a pretty basic Photoshop experience here. It does get a lot more advanced. I don't wanna kind of knock it and say that it's just a cheap alternative. It's really not a cheap alternative. It's fully featured. I'm only scratching like the top layer of what this software can do. Highly recommend it, give it a try. They also have a, they also have a free trial. You can get it in the uh, app store. You can get it directly from their website. Works phenomenally and don't take my word for it. Give it a test run and see what it can do. I'm in no way affiliated with these people. I just got sick and tired of having to worry about, you know, paying for Photoshop every month. So anyway, hope you guys found that useful. If you have any questions, do let us know. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you next time.